Most people think botanicals are just there to make the water look brown. Leaves go in, the tank goes darker, and that's usually where the thinking stops. But in real black water habitats, botanicals aren't decoration, they're chemistry, they're biology, they're behavior, and without them, black water simply doesn't exist. But here's the fun bit. In the wild, if you remove leaf litter from blackwater rivers and forest streams, those systems would stop functioning. The chemistry would change, the microbial life would collapse, the food web would shrink, and the fish would lose the very environment they evolved inside. So today, I don't just want to show you what leaves or pods you can use, I want to explain what botanicals actually do, why they work, and why blackwater aquariums feel incomplete without them. So like most people, I thought something was wrong the first time I let leaves break down in my tank. The water got darker and all this mold started building up and the substrate looked really messy. And everything I'd learned before told me that I'd failed. Clean tanks were supposed to look clean, right? But when I started studying natural black water habitats, I realized that what I was seeing wasn't neglect, it was actually ecology. Black water environments aren't powered by filters or loads of water changes, they're powered by slow decay. Leaves fall in, soften, break down, and quietly feed the entire system. And once I understood that, my whole approach to black water aquariums changed forever. Botanicals work because they release tannins and humic substances into the water. These compounds gently lower pH, bind certain metals, soften light penetration, and create the tea-colored water we associate with black water. But the more important effect is biological. As botanicals break down, they release dissolved organic carbon, that carbon feeds heterophobic bacteria, which processes waste, stabilizes nutrients, and form the base of the microbial food web. In other words, botanicals don't just color the water, they feed the system. Most people don't realize this, but black water stability doesn't come from removing waste quickly, it comes from processing waste slowly and evenly. This isn't just observation either. Studies published in journals like Freshwater Biology and Hydrobiology show that leaf litter is the primary driver of microbial respiration and nutrient cycling in blackwater rivers. Research into Amazonian floodplain systems has shown that dissolved organic carbon from decomposing leaves directly increases bacterial processing while stabilizing nitrogen availability in low nutrient waters. So in simple terms, more leaf litter creates more biological stability which is exactly what we try to recreate in our aquariums. That's why black water tanks feel calmer when they're built properly. Nothing spikes, nothing crashes, everything moves slowly. Black water isn't about control, it's all about momentum. You can also forage for leaves yourself. I do it all the time, but you have to be sensible. So stay away from things like dog paths, stay away from roadside trees, stay away from areas that could be sprayed with pesticides or weed killer. Woodland paths, forest floors, and clean natural areas are always safer choices. And if you're unsure, don't use it. No leaf is worth taking the risk. Also, make sure every item that you put in is completely dead. And if you're unsure, do your research because some items like pine cones, for example, can leach poisonous toxins. Now, people always want a list of leaves. There's Indian leaves, almond leaves, oak, beech, magnolia, guava, sycamore. They all work. But the truth is, it's not about finding a magic leaf. It's about using safe, pesticide-free leaves that decay at different speeds. Some soften in weeks, some last months, and that overlap is exactly what you want. Different decaying speeds means the system never runs out of biological input. The tank stays alive instead of relying on one big event, such as putting all your botanicals in at the one time. And it's not just leaves you can use. Seed pods, husks, palm shells, bark, Alder cones and even banana stems all play different roles. Some break down slowly and provide long-term structure, while others break down fast and refresh bacterial activity. Banana stems, for example, soften quickly and release nutrients fast. Yeah, they don't last as long, but that's exactly why they're useful. They kickstart the microbial growth and refresh the system biology. They in turn create biofilm, that fluffy white stuff you might have seen, which is a great food source for your animals. And most people freak out when they see this. I did too. But once you understand its benefits, it's great to see. Blackwater works best when materials decay at different speeds. 
People always ask me, why should we boil botanicals? It's not to sterilize them completely. It's to remove surface contaminants, soften the structure and help them sink. It also reduces the initial tannin dump so that you get a more controlled release instead of a sudden shock. And also due to seasonal changes, leaves could contain more sugar when collected, which in turn will leach into your water, causing bacterial blooms. Boiling also doesn't remove their benefits. It just makes them safer and easier to work with. And a top tip is to make sure you boil them for around 40 minutes and then pour all that water out, rinse them, and then put them into your tank. One of the most surprising things for people is that established blackwater tanks with heavy botanicals often need fewer water changes. And it's not because waste disappears, it's because it's processed more evenly. Organic acids bind compounds, bacteria spread nutrients processing across a longer time, so nothing spikes so suddenly. So blackwater tanks don't stay clean by being sterile, they stay clean by being biologically busy. So one of the biggest changes botanicals create is behavioural. Fish in botanical tanks forage more, then they hide less, and they explore more. Schooling becomes tighter, territorial behavior becomes calmer, and shy species come out sooner and stay out longer. That's because botanicals don't just change the water chemistry, they change how safe fish feel inside the environment. Multiple studies measuring cortisol in fish show lower stress levels in low light tannin rich waters. So think of it this way, botanicals and substrate are both trying to do the same thing, feed bacteria and stabilize the system biologically. One works from above, the other works from below, and neither replaces the other. They simply support the same process. And there isn't a right or wrong way here. They are just different biological approaches. Most people think botanicals dirty a tank, but in reality, they're the reason black water tanks work at all. So botanicals aren't just leaves in water, they're the chemistry, they're the biology, the behavior, and the stability. They're the slow engine that powers the entire black water ecosystem. And here's the question I wanna leave you with. If black water systems are built on decay, bacteria, and time, what happens when we stop trying to control them and start trying to understand them? Because everything we've looked at in this series has shown one thing, nature doesn't aim for perfection, it aims for balance. In the next series, we're not gonna ask how to build aquariums. We're gonna ask why natural systems work the way they do, why fish behave the way they do, and why environments stabilize or collapse. And why sometimes, the less we interfere, the more alive everything becomes.